Welcome to this product demonstration video where I'll be terminating a Category 7 cable with Liberty's new Connect Tech Cat RJ45 connector. My name is Ralph Parrott. I'm Liberty's Director of Quality and Technical Services, and let's get this going. So first thing you want to do is make sure you have the right tools. You've got to have a pair of pliers. It doesn't have to be this, you know, expensive pliers or anything. It can be regular slip joints. Um, you can have a, basically a tweaker, a flush cutter, a jacket stripper. You're going to have to have your connector and your cable. So kind of go through the process here, pull all these tools out of the way. So first step is going to be to size your boot to the cable. So the way you do that is you slide the boot up the cable backwards. First make sure it's nice and round. Slide it up backwards till it stops. And where it stops, so you have these little cross members here on this boot. I'm going to go ahead, pop those off. <clears throat> then I'll flip the boot back around and slide it up the cable. So boot is sized to the cable. So first step is going to be to prepare your cable. So I want to go ahead and strip off the jacket. So I have a cigar cutter stripper. I have a min spin, max spin. I want to use the min spin. Do about one and a half to two inches of jacket and just kind of give it a couple spins around and cut through the jacket. Go ahead and separate the jacket. This one's being a little bit, there we go. So we've got the jacket separated. Category 7 and Category 8 cables both have double shield on them. They're going to have a braid shield and they're going to be a foil shield around each pair. And the pair shields are not isolated. They all share the same ground. So I want to go ahead and birdcage my braid shield like so and then pull a few strands off to the side to use as a drain wire. And then anything that's left over I want to cut off. So I'm going to take my flush cutters and with the flush cut side facing the jacket, just kind of go ahead and go around the jacket. Trim those off. Make sure you don't cut off your selected strands for your drain wire. Uh, any leftover strands after you do that, just go ahead and incorporate those all into your drain wire. Twist it to make wire. Take the copper tape that comes in the connector package. Go ahead and lift one end of it. And I find it's easier if I use my diagonal cutters just to grab that little tail. Separate it from the backing. And then use this copper tape to anchor that drain wire against the jacket. Now one thing you want to make sure you don't do is have the copper tape go past the jacket because it is sharp, it can cut into insulation. So wrap that around, pull my excess braid drain wire off to the side here. Got one strand that doesn't want to cooperate here. All right, just pull that out and cut off your excess. Now I'm going to go ahead and untwist my pairs. First thing you'll notice is these are pretty heavy. You know, there's like 22 gauge on Cat7 cables. So separate those out. And each pair has a basically a seam going down the wire. I want to go ahead and find that seam. And just trace it all the way down to the jacket as far as I can. Nip it. And then I can go ahead and peel that right off. And once I get all the pairs separated, now I don't want to untwist them yet. And the reason why is category seven, just like category eight, has no markings on the white wire. So if, believe it or not, the, the performance is so high that that dye will actually cause the cable to fail testing. So there's no dye in those white conductors. So taking my load bar, I'm going to set it so that I can read the, the text facing me. My pattern I'm going to use is 568B, which is green and brown on the bottom side. Now, just a clarification here, the bottom side is this row here, which is the holes. So they're going to, these wires are going to go into the holes down here for the bottom row. So I want to put this in the right pattern. So right now my brown's on the wrong side. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my cable over. Kind of pull my, just kind of get that in the right pattern like so. So now my green and brown are correct. So I'm going to untwist these, kind of give them a little twist to start, take a tweaker, slide it in that little gap there and pull has two purposes. One, it untwists, and two, it also helps to straighten them. And now I'll put these in the correct color code. So my two uh, white wires will be on the outside, so I'll have white, green, and then brown, white. Go ahead and set those all up in the right pattern. Go ahead and trim off the rough spots. And now I can take my load bar and just actually just punch these in here. Slide that all the way down against the jacket and then bend out the two outer conductors. Basically, I want to make sure that that helps to hold the load bar in place. Verify your color code, make sure everything's still correct. 
Now you can pull your other wires up and around. Depending on which side of the cable you're terminating, one side will always be completely backwards of the other. So this is actually the difficult side where the other conductors are underneath. You can untwist these. Again, you can use the tweaker. You can do it by hand, either one. Put these also in the correct color code. These actually slide into these grooves and it locks down. You can feel it kind of click when it locks in place. You can use an insert tool to do it too. You can go ahead and use a basically a 110 insert tool to put it in there, but these are actually pretty easy so you don't have to go that far. So once this load bar is fully loaded, all the conductors are in there, I can go ahead and trim these now. So I can go ahead and trim off all these wires, flush to the plastic. So the top row is flush to the top and the bottom row is flush to the bottom. Verify the color code. You can do that before you trim or after, but just verify that color code. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull off this piece of paper. I don't need it anymore. So now the connector comes with a rubber stopper in it to stop it from closing on you. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that rubber stopper. I don't need that. And I'm going to flip this upside down and put it onto the connector. And these line up. You can actually feel these little uh, tabs here will line up with the IDC teeth on here. Takes a little bit of practice, but you can feel those things kind of lock in there. And once they lock in there, you can close the connector. You can do this by hand or you can use a tool, but you can squeeze this connector shut and that actually does the termination. So with level closed pliers, for example, this makes it really easy. You just go ahead and squeeze until they click. You'll feel both sides of these latches will click in place. And our last step on here before I slide the boot up is going to be the strain relief. There's a zip tie in here and you can use a zip tie gun or you can use your hand. Either one works. But go ahead and line this up and use that on the back side of the connector. You want to kind of have this facing up because I'll show you why in a minute. Go ahead and zip that nice and tight. Trim it off. Now you take your boot and you notice there's a, there's a hump on top of the connector here and a hump on top of the boot. You can slide this up and just kind of position it in there. It takes a little bit of force, but pop that in there and you can see that the zip tie actually acts like a strain relief to hold that boot in place. So now there's this connector is all the way done. This is just a cap to protect your RJ45. And now we have an RJ45, basically a 10 gigabit network, you know, Cat 6A RJ45 on a Cat 7 cable. Both Cat 7 and Cat 6A are both 10 gigabit network cables. So using a 10 gig connector makes sense. Um, and then this is probably, if you think about Category 7, it's not usually used in what they call an RJ45 world. It's used as an augmented RJ45 in a whole different system for a true Cat 7 network. But in the United States, what we use Cat 7 for is basically a premium 10 gig uh, Cat 6A type uh, application, a 10 gig, or we use it for a premium HD base T run where you have almost zero bit errors. Music